Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to apply the third index law. Okay, so the third index law states that any base with an index of zero, so a so power of zero, is equal to one. Okay, so that can be written as a to the zero equals one. Okay, now here's a little bit of proof, which I think is pretty cool. So in the first method, what we're going to do is we're going to take two to the power of three and divide it by two to the power of three. Okay, we know that 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times by itself 3 times. Okay, so that would be 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, and 2 times 2 equals 4 times 2 equals 8. Alright, so that can be written as 8 divided by 8. And we know that 8 goes into 8 once. So, um, 2 to the power of 3 divided by 2 to the power of 3 equals 1. But if we do this another method using um, the second index law, 2 to the power of 3 divided by 2 to the power of 3, we know that these are common bases. So if that happens, then we subtract our powers. So that would be, using the second index law, 2 to the power of 3 minus 3, which equals 2 to the power of 0. Since these are the same, and we've worked it out two different ways, we might know that 2 to the power of, uh, power of 0 must equal 1. Okay, so let's do some examples um, applying this theory. Okay, so example 1. It can be, we know that any single base with an uh, index of 0 must be equal 1. So you can choose any number. All right, 15 to the power to the index of 0 we know equals 1. Could be any base, all right? Even if we have brackets, okay? So example 2 we could have any number in brackets. 25 times 36. And if that is to the power of 0, it does not matter what is in these brackets. If the whole brackets is to the power of 0, whatever that number is, it still will be to the power of 0. And anything to the power of 0 equals 1. All right. Um, we'll do something a little bit different as well. So if we have 19e... Uh, to the power of 5, a to the power of 0. Okay? We know that whatever that a to the power of 0, we know that that is equal to 1. Okay? So this can be written as 19e to the power of 5, because we and if we know that there is two um, variables together, like next to each other, we know there's secretly little times in there. So that would be times 1. Okay? And 19e to the power of 5 times 1 is 19e to the power of 5. There's no more we can do on that. Okay, so this, guys, the third law is just explaining that anything to the power of 0 will always equal 1. Okay, so we'll do a th uh, fourth and final example. All right, I'll move this page down a little bit. All right. Um, we will do six m to the power of three times eleven m to the power of fourteen, all over three m to the power of ten times 2m to the power of 7. Alright, now this equa uh, equation here, we're going to have to use um, all three index laws that we know so far to solve this. Okay, so looking at this straight away, we know um, that these are multiplication symbols, so we have to start with our first index law. Okay, and we know that when we look at two things like this with variables, we times our coefficients together and then times our variables together using the first index law. So we're going to do that for both 
sides of this equa of this equation on, on the top and the bottom. Okay, so that will be six times eleven. So that coefficient there times that coefficient there times by m to the power of 3 times m to the power of 14. All right, these plus times our two variables together. And we're going to do the exactly the same thing on the bottom of our equation. So 3 times 2, there are our two coefficients. And then we times our variables together. m to the power of 10 times m to the power of 7. Okay? Now, we can work that out. Um, 6 times 11 is 66. All right? And um, m, time, m to the power of 3 times m to the power of 14, we know that it's a times. We use the first law, which means... Um, you plus these numbers together, which would give us m to the power of 17. All right, that is over um, 3 times 2, which we know is 6. All right, and using our first law again, m to the power of 10 times m to the power of 7, which would give us m 17. Okay, now looking at this, all we have left is a division. So we know we can use our second law. Okay. Now, in our second law, we still look at our coefficients first. Okay. So how many times does um, 6 go into uh, 66? So this can be written as 66 over 6, because we do our coefficients first, and then we do our um, m17 over m17, our variables next. Okay, this is still using our second law. All right, so 6 goes into 66 11 times. All right, and using our second law, we know that m to the power of 17 divided by m to the power of 17 would be m17 minus 17, which would be 11 times m to the power of zero. Now we can use our third law to take this. We know that anything to the power of zero equals one. So this would be 11 times one and 11 times one is 11. 